I might get Paul to take us through some of the history and then some of the uh, the reasons why maybe initially we thought or some people thought that seed oils were healthy and what the evidence is uh, now. So over to you, Paul. Thanks, Peter. So I guess it's uh, this is the same old story, isn't it, Peter? We've just been led down the garden path. We've, uh, we've you know, one of, uh, we've been misled and you would well know this too, Nicole. I mean, with your teaching, you would have had mainstream teaching like I have. You've been taught that saturated fat equals bad, seed oil, vegetable oil equals good. And the notion of this, again, is due to the properties in supposedly lowering LDL cholesterol. The problem is the chemical property of seed oils, which allows them to be liquid, is also the chemical property that makes them very reactive. And they can actually do damage to the tissues of our bodies through something called free radicals. So the way to understand it is, and we don't really have to get down into the the nitty-gritty of it, but having different kinds of bonds can determine whether a fat is an oil or a solid. And seed oils have a particular kind of bond that is very reactive. In the same way that metal can rust through a process called oxidation, these oils are actually oxidised in the bottle. And they actually have to put them through a lot of industrial processes like bleaching and you know, trying to deodorise them. Otherwise, we would absolutely never consume them. And it's not a stretch to say that they were originally machine lubricants that then were repurposed as an industrialised food item. Now, the problem is that when we consume vegetable and seed oils, we consume these oxidation products and that leads to inflammation inside us. Basically, what happens is... Through our digestive tract, these things called free radicals, otherwise you might have heard the term reactive oxygen species, it's just another way of saying the same thing, these get absorbed across our intestines and enter our bloodstream where they get delivered to the liver. And when they get to the liver, they can actually directly cause something called fatty liver disease, which most people would have heard about, and is strongly associated with something called insulin resistance, which again... Most diabetics, if they haven't heard about it, they've certainly experienced it because that's one of the core problems in type 2 diabetes. It's insulin resistance that actually prevents you from controlling your blood glucose levels effectively. Now, I don't know, have you ever uh, come across the Rose corn oil study, Peter? It's an old uh, I, I have. It's an oldie but a goodie. And I quite like it because it... We have actually talked about this before, so that was a bit of a loaded question. But they did some, uh, as well as finding that the people who consumed the corn oil were more likely to die, which we can put aside for a moment, they had some subjects who were diabetic. And as you know, in previous, um, you know, ancient eras, we're talking uh, many hundreds of years ago, one of the main ways that diabetes was diagnosed was by actually tasting somebody's urine. This is because diabetes is a condition where the sugar in the blood goes too high. And if it gets excessively high, some of that sugar actually leaks out into the urine. Um, we get overflow. So there's actually accounts of ancient people where they would document that people who were sick before they were about to die, the ants would actually come and feed on their urine, hunting out the sugar. So basically the point is, if you have sugar in your urine, it's a bad sign and it's often associated with diabetes. Now, in the Rose Corn Oil Study, Rose was just the name of the lead investigator, they actually identified that subjects, when they consumed the corn oil, they developed this sugar in their urine. When they stopped the corn oil, the sugar went away. And then they trialled it again. This is what we call an ABA design. And they did the intervention again. They gave the corn oil back and the sugar came back. And they could do this as many times as they wanted. They were able to definitively demonstrate that the consumption of a vegetable or a seed oil in place of the regular saturated fat was actually associated with worsening control of the diabetes.